You are watching a master at work. <laughs> Hello guys, this is the Focus Odin 5 FDM printer, uh, which apparently is a folding printer. It's a long overdue review and unboxing that I have been meaning to get out for quite some time. I've had this printer in its box for the last couple of months, but I just haven't had the time to physically make the content. So let's get straight on into this and start unboxing. This is the Focus Odin 5 F3 and is their launch printer with a 99% pre-built framework and simplistic design. With two bolts to the left and two bolts to the right, and two for the spool holder, I was left thinking, why aren't all 3D printers this easy to assemble? Certainly if you are in the market right now for your very first 3D printer, the Odin 5 F3 is a serious contender in that space. Of course, favorited by many, the original Creality Ender 3 receives clone upon clone, but this printer is different. It has some originality to it, making it a refreshing change to the unboxing and testing game. Coming in at £299 in the UK, or around 310 actually at the moment there's a 269.99 offer on their website, this printer volume is a modest 235 by 235 by 250 building area, which is pretty much standard within this space right now. The CR6SE, the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, etc, etc. The Odin 5 runs a 32-bit MKS board with Trinamic TMC 2208 stepper drivers, open source Marlin, double z-axis it's compact direct drive with filament runout sensor and there's also capacity for a bl touch and the door to board on the printer allows the cabling to be plug and play but my thoughts are if you can't level a bed of this size the bl touch and upgrade path won't help you a great deal learn how to level the bed and see how you get on before putting in any upgrades so let's move on the setup of this printer can be done within around about 10 minutes the bed levelling can be done within a couple of minutes and the printer getting up to temperature takes around about three minutes. So the Focus Odin 5, the folding 3D printer. While there are hordes of really happy die-hard fans of this printer, I do tend to be a little bit more sceptical nowadays of new products being launched onto the market by unknown companies that seemingly have mass-shipped their products to every man, woman, child of an influential nature. Even with that red light, the practical questions of launch of having a folding 3D printer have just left me asking why? No really why? Is this a travel thing? Well actually it turns out to be a setup thing. So Focus very much have said this is all about the setup. It's ease of setup. So the folding element probably isn't for travel but it did make me wonder if someone had an application for a folding printer. Even the Ender 3 has only four screws to undo at the bottom of that printer to allow the Z fold to go flat. In fact stop. Let's do an experiment. Let's take one Ender 3 and one Focus Odin 5 and see how long it takes to fold flat. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Well done, that was one minute six.
feels like a shallow victory at 54 seconds. Amazing. So the clear winner there was the Focus Odin 5 F3 by around about 10 seconds there. So the practicality of this machine is kind of a head scratcher, but an innovation of sorts. It would have been nice to see a clip mount or thumb screws for quick release on this foldability. And if I wanted to travel with this 3D printer, I guess this would be the one that I would take. Why? Well, because it folds into a bag. Portability of a 3D printer isn't as far as I know. One of these things that I've heard of, unless you're Naomi Wu, of course. With the 3D printing backpack, or maybe you even want to impress somebody in a prototyping meeting. Who knows? But if you do have an awesome reason of why this would benefit you, please let me know in the comment section below. I was sent two of these printers, and we will come onto that in a little bit, but let's just say that the first one certainly needed some finessing right out of the box. The bed needed some adjustment, and the X carriage needed tightening up. This is not a deal breaker, and of course was an easy fix. And in order to finish the installation, all you need to do is plug in the two ribbing cables and remove some of the plastics from the screen, and also the build plate, and under the bed. So let's come on to the next part, which I'm calling Notable Mentions. If you do decide to open up the printer for any reason, you will be greeted by a MakerBase setup of a Robin Nano along with a MakerBase touchscreen, which does allow STL models to be shown if you add the image to the SD card. A generic 24 volt power supply that doesn't require a fan, all connections seem to have a professional approach to electronics using ferrules on all the connectors. Let's move on guys to the good, bad and kind of confusing on the Focus Odin 5 F3. So let's start off with the good. Number one, the printer is easy to set up and build without question. Number two, it is well packed and the box gives a good impression of a decent, well-rounded product. Number three, it's running a 32-bit motherboard running Trinamic stepper drivers on the TMC 2208s, which again is great to see. Number four, it's not a Kickstarter, but let's come back to that. Number five, it's twin Z's on a smaller printer. This is certainly welcomed. Number six, it comes with a 12 month warranty, but I'm not really quite sure what that covers. Number seven, as a reviewer and a user of 3D printers, Focus have sent me a second printer when the first one failed. And I'll, I'll come on to that in a little bit as well. Number eight, it is a very tiny printer and I can see that many, many people actually really like it. It's a trusted format with extras that you would want, but don't have on an Ender 3. Number nine, it does have direct drive with a filament runout sensor and it uses a volcano style hot end. And finally, number 10, I've got to give a shout out to the Focus official user group. They are absolutely killing it with help and support for a number of users that are struggling for the first time use. If you do click over to the file section as well, you will find a bunch of information on Cura profiles and setup videos and setup information and all sorts of crazy stuff. And it is absolutely top notch. And if you do need any kind of support or if you have a problem or if there's an error that comes up on the screen or anything crazy like that, these guys have already experienced it, done it. They know it inside out and they will be able to help you. Let's talk print quality. In the print test that I have been undertaking over the past couple of weeks, I have noticed quite a difference in quality between using Cura and Prusa Slicer. With Prusa Slicer delivering overall a visible quality difference between test prints. In most cases here, I have been printing the Squid Game figures and I'll drop a link below to the Patreon page where you can get these files also. The test prints are pretty simple. I use Cura and I use Prusa Slicer and I'm printing exactly the same models, although I am doing them in slightly different filaments. I'm using matte black, I'm using two in PLA, and the PLA that I'm using for that particular one is going to have some moisture inside of it. There's going to be two in grey and two in silk, which is actually the silk that came with the 3D printer. And the model you can see right now was actually printed in PLA, which is a matte color. On the left-hand side here, you will see printed in matte black. We have a print example from the FL Sun SR, which I've just made a video on. The quality is actually divine for sure. And on the right-hand side is the result from the Focus printer. Most of these images will show two prints and the Cura Slice version will be on the left and the Prusa Slicer version will be on the right. In all cases, prints were generally okay, but did improve with Prusa Slicer. The profiles were all downloaded directly from the Focus community page, but I feel for this printer in particular, we'll need further dialing in to really obtain the optimal settings. Mainly with these profiles, I found that changes to the retraction settings, jerk and linear advance do make slight differences to the details. So my advice is to play around with these settings and dial in your printer. On these images, I hope that you'll be able to see the differences in details on parts like the mask and around the head, and in, certainly in most 
most cases you can still see the layer lines and I'd go as far as to say that the prints and the printer settings still need work. I will of course post these up in a link below when I have finished with them. Next up, the bad and confusing, at least in my opinion. Number one, the ribbon cables do really worry me and although you do get a second cable in the box, my concern is that over time they are going to be another consumable. But of course, time will tell. The Artillery Sidewinder X1 has these kinds of ribbons installed on that printer and seemingly works very well on that machine. So perhaps this is the way forward. Number two, the fan shroud limits the cooling fans and does create noise. Now there are people creating fan covers online to remove some of the fan noise, but there certainly is a limit for sure on the front shroud not allowing direct airflow in. It is something that I plan to upgrade and if there is time, I will pop something into this video. If not, make sure you hit that subscribe button because there will be another update coming up soon. Number three, replacement parts. Focus actually sent me a replacement printer instead of a replacement board. This is a worry as if you were a consumer waiting on a part, these parts don't seem really available or stocked on Amazon or via drop shipments. So at this point in time, you could be waiting several weeks for a replacement part to arrive. Now we are only talking about an MKS Robin Nano. You probably could have picked up online uh, for not an awful lot of money. So it seemed quite bizarre that they would have sent me a whole printer. But I will say in their defense that fair play to them because they know I wanted to get this review out and um, I hope I hope that in some ways I have done some justice to them. Number four. So when I said it's not a Kickstarter, I actually messaged my contacts to ask if they were working with any other companies or if my contact had worked with any other printing company. Weird question? Well, no, not really because their service seemed to be absolutely top notch. It was only when I read on the box that the manufacturer is Shenzhen Aobu Technology Limited that I started started fishing around on Google. So that company has copywritten the name EZT3D and they make the EZT3D foldable S2 printer which is on Kickstarter or certainly was on Kickstarter as the world's first foldable 3D printer. So it does look like the whole funding thing at launch was successful but there seemed to be a problem with them actually getting the printers out so I don't quite know what's happened there but the printers are bizarrely similar. Uh, we're talking about colour differences and shrouds and things like that. Even the box is the same. Check it out for yourself. The link will be in the description, of course, as always. Perhaps Focus purchased the stock and ran a relaunch. I really don't know, but it's certainly very interesting. And I thought it was worth covering. Number five, slicer hacks. At time of recording, Focus actually doesn't have a Cura profile that is actually published on the latest version of Cura, which is kind of annoying, but there are ways around it. Now, of course, on the SD card, you will find a version of Cura that they have already set up for, but the version of that Cura is actually pretty bad. So importing your own is where I'm going to be going next. Now, if you do toddle over to Thingiverse, you will find that user Rene2202 has already posted some files up. So what they suggest doing here is uploading an STL file along with two JSON files to the following areas, definitions, extruders, meshes. And in this case, I am using a Mac, but it's going to be the same, pretty much the same anyway with Windows. All you need to do is find the location of the files, Go into the resources, a second resources tab, and then basically copy the files straight into that folder. Now, three folders there that I've already mentioned before. That's it. Very, very simple to do. And then, of course, just reboot Cura, and you should be ready to go. Focus Odin 5 will actually appear in the drop-down menu now. And all you need to do is just add to that as you normally would do with any Cura profile and you should be good to go. I would also suggest you go over to the community site as well and make sure that you download a profile for PLA. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So that's about it from me. Let me know how you're getting on with your Focus Odin 5 in the comments below. I probably will be giving at least one of these away. I'm going to keep hold of these boxes. And uh, it's going to be a UK giveaway, I'd imagine. I'm waiting on this motherboard to arrive. As soon as that's done, I'll do another upload video, just changing that over. And uh, we'll run some sort of competition and, uh, and give another printer away. I am giving away two FL Sun Q5s uh, probably this week. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'm only going to give away printers to subscribers. It's the reason that this kind of works. You subscribe, I give away free printers. It's a pretty good deal, right? Um, yeah, really, really good. Really happy with that. Um, make sure you keep hold of these ribbon cables because I think you're going to need them. And uh, we will see you next time. Bye for now.